Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, this is a pretty popular problem. Oh yeah, by the way, check the description. If you want to see premium problems, I do those on Patreon and my Discord is growing, so join that. Okay, back to the problem. This is a medium problem called decode string and it looks like a lot of people like it. I thought it was okay. Um, it is basically, here's the problem is we're given an encoded string and we want to decode the string. So you might think of this as like, you know, if... Um, you know, the government's trying to intercept a foreign country's secret message. That would be an encoded message and they want to decode it, right? That's a scenario like this, right? Um, the rule in this for the encoding they give us. So we already know how they encode it. So we can just easily decode it if we know this. It's basically the encoded string is K uh, and then an encoded string in brackets where encoded string inside of the square brackets is being repeated K times. So whatever's in brackets, it's a number and then whatever's in brackets is repeated that number of times. Okay. Uh, you may assume that the input string is always valid, so there's no white spaces or square bracket, and the square brackets are always well formed. So there's no junk. It's just a number and braces, but they can be nested. Okay. Uh, furthermore, you assume the original data does not contain any digits, digits repeated numbers. Okay, it doesn't matter. So let's look at the examples. So what it means is uh, there's a number, brackets, and then a string inside of the brackets. So three brackets A means three A's. And then two bracket BC means two BC, BC. Um, and then we just have to return this, right? So that's the decoded version. This is the encoded version. Here's the encoded version and with a nest. So it's three A, two C. So you might think like, what do we evaluate first? But it's, it's just algebra rules. The innermost gets evaluated first. So A and then two C's is the inside so then it would be three and you can imagine a c c so three a c c is a c c a c c a c c uh you can look at the third one by yourself but um let's just talk about how we're going to do this now how do we solve this problem how do we do this well what we're going to do is we're going to loop through this string the encoded string and you might assume that right first instinct is you're going to have to loop through it at some point and figure it out right and there's going to be four characters we're going to see we're either going to see a number we're either going to see an open brace, we're either going to see a letter, or we're either going to see a closed brace. And depending on which one of the, those are the only four, right? Think of another one, tell me. We're not going to see periods and exclamation points because it says you can assume that it's always good. Um, there's no white spaces, it's just a number, a letter, or braces we're seeing. So we just have to loop through and account for those, right? So whatever we do with those is depend, you know, depend. And then, you know, once we know that, that's going to help us out a lot. So we're just going to loop through, check the character, current character, whatever it is, we'll do something. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have two stacks, right? This seems obviously when you see parentheses, probably think of stacks. Stacks are in both parentheses problems. So um, we're going to loop through and we're going to have two stacks. One is going to keep track of the counts. And one is going to keep track of the strings. So one is going to, you know, keep track of all the counts. And we're going to, in this, you know, they should be the same size, the counts and the strings. And we are just going to, you know, put things onto the stack. And when we go inner, when there's inner parentheses or, in, I mean, inner brackets, we're going to pop off the string. We're going to, um, the current, we're just going to add a string onto the stack each time there's more brackets. Where they, then when we get a closing bracket, we're going to pop off the string and we're going to repeat it, whatever, we're going to pop the count off of the count stack and we're going to repeat it that number of times. And that's all you got to do. That's pretty much it. So let's code it up. I think I explained that. You could ask me any questions if you don't understand, but uh, you'll see what I'm doing right here. So let's create our new stacks. One of them is for the counts. Uh, this will be called counts is equal to new stack. Um, there we go. Uh, one of them is for the strings, and this one is called. What what is wrong with me? How did I forget already? Well, I, I just like blank completely. Um, we're doing counts, and then we're doing. Oh yes, we'll just call it result. So okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't know. I just I, I did like seven problems today, so I think that might be why. So, uh, and then we have our current string, and then we're gonna have um, an index to see where we are in the. Uh, this is the input string, so to see where we are, we're gonna start at zero. So while index is less than s dot length, we're gonna traverse it, right? You know, and uh, we'll return res at the end. So that's what's gonna be returned, and I'll explain it. 
Okay, so there's four types of characters I said as we traverse, right? So we're gonna check for those. If the character is a digit, and this is a good built-in method to do that, the, use the character class. So if s.char at index is a digit, well, we'll do something. But what if it's not a digit? Well, then s.char at index could be a opening bra bracket. So if it's an opening bracket, we'll also do something. Um, we'll just copy and paste for the closing bracket because it's the same thing. And if it's not a digit, if it's not an opening brace, it's not a closing brace, well, the strings are valid, so it has to be a character. So if it's a character, we'll also do something. And in the character's case, we're just going to add it onto the current string. So whenever we see a character, we're just going to add it onto the current string. We're going to say s.char at index gets added to the current string. We increment the index. Um, when we see a opening brace we're just going to push a new string onto the stack right because we're going inner we're getting we're getting into the you know there's a new string we got to figure out and then we got to do it a certain number of times so we're going to push uh onto the stack and then we're going to reset our current string and then we're just going to increment pretty straightforward when it's closed we'll do this after but we're going to do the, we're going to get the counts now so we got we got the string when we see the opening brace we got the string but what about the number if we see a number well, we got to make get our count and put it in the count array. So we set our count to zero. We say, okay, while, um, uh, what am I thinking of? What, dude, I'm blanking so much today. Well, what is wrong with me? Oh, we just do, um, sorry, sorry. While the care, you know, I'm having a bad, I think I'm like brain dead right now or something, but Okay. Uh, if you see a digit, the digit could be, you know, it could be 3A, right? And that would be 3As, AAA, but it also could be 30As, and that would be 30As, you know? So if we see, you know, it could be like this too. It could be like a million numbers, right? It could be a, a million As. So if it's 30, we have to account for a, you know, multi, you know, a long uh, string of numbers. So when we see a number, we want to make sure we're at the end of the number. So we want to do a while loop within and we want to say, okay, while the character is still a digit, we're going to add on to our count and we're going to do count is equal to 10 times count plus uh, s dot char at index uh, minus zero. So s.char at index minus zero gets the current number. So if we're looping s.char at index, if it was zero, we would see three and then we'd see zero. So it would just, this would just do that. Um, why do we do 10 times count plus the current number? 10 times count plus the current number is so that for three, it would be count is zero. We see a three and then we would be like, okay, count is equal to 10 times zero because it's zero plus three which is zero plus three, which is three. So that would be fine. If we see a 30, then we would see, we count would be equal to three at first, and then count would be three, and we'd do 10 times three, which is 30 plus zero. So it'd be 30. So you just have to account for, you know, um, you know, multi digits. So like 10 digits, 20 digits, 30 digits, two digits, five digits, whatever. Uh, you just got to account for that. This loop does that. Once you have the count built up and you get reach the end of the number, you can just put it into the stack, push it onto the stack. So you push onto the stack. That should be good. Um, when you see an opening brace, you put a new string onto the string stack. When you see a closing brace, you pop off of the string stack. So we do temp is equal to new string builder of results dot pop, pop it off the string stack. And then uh, you want to pop off the count too. So you want to say uh, int count is equal to counts dot pop. So this is the number of times that you want to repeat. And we have our current string, which has also been building up, you know? So this res has been building up. So we want to repeat that res uh, count number of times. So to do that, we just do temp dot append. Um, you know, res, right? You read the current string. Sorry, I hear something going on in my house. This is a, or a little bit unorganized of a solution here. Sorry. So you repeat the current string um, count number of times. Then you have that. That's exactly what you want to do. So it would pop off the string. It would look the current. If it was 3A, the current string would be A. You'd repeat it three times. You get the count. 
and then uh, all you want to do after that is you want to do res is equal to temp dot string because res is what we're returning uh, two strings sorry and uh, index plus equals one so you increment the index at every part and uh, yeah then you return the resulting array and uh, yeah that should be it as long as res is the right type you should be good a lot of errors because it's kind of a long solution so I get distracted res dot push res result dot push res push it onto the stack sorry I'm a, I'm a disgrace there you go 100 percent of solutions boom only a few errors uh thank you guys for watching uh let me know if you have any questions i think it's pretty straightforward i think i explained it well uh sorry for the pauses uh i've been doing late code all day so i have and i'm the king of excuses so i'll just excuse all of my behaviors and have errors and everything and then just complain about it every time so that's what you got to deal with all right um thank you guys for watching though really appreciate it